We just finished a series with the CAT C15 that had the low boost. Well, the same truck, the driver was complaining that the boost gauge on the dash was erratic. So that boost gauge has a uh, hard Stratiflex line that goes from it all the way down to the cylinder head. To, and, in, and then the cylinder head, there's a fitting that goes into the head and that's actually in the intake port in the head. So that's how it senses the boost that the turbo is making in the integral cylinder head intake manifold. They put what's called a centered restricted fitting in the head between the boost gauge and the intake manifold. So that fitting has uh, a brass screen on one side and it has a very, very small orifice hole through it. And it's just a small 1 8 inch special pipe fitting. And that fitting, the centered brass was plugged on their old fitting and that's why the gauge was reading low and sometimes they'd shut the truck off and the gauge would read 10 PSI when the engine was off. They thought maybe the gauge was broken but it was actually that fitting was plugged up. So in the video you're going to see in a second uh, you're going to see what the fitting looks like. The reason the fitting's in there, there's a couple reasons. Number one, the restricted orifice is so that the gauge on the dash, the needle on it is nice and smooth and it doesn't jump all over the place because the boost in the intake manifold is not a steady smooth fluctuation. It's jumping all over the place every time you move the throttle or the load changes. So this makes the gauge nice and smooth. The brass centered fitting if you were to take the line off of there and leave it off and forgot you left it off and the engine was idling, you have a little bit of a vacuum in the manifold when the engine's idling because the turbo is turning really slow. So they don't want you pulling dirt in from the outside world in. So that's the reason they have that centered filter in there just to keep dirt from going in the other way should something happen to the line. So let's take a look at that fitting quick. And we're going to start off by looking at a picture of the boost gauge and the dash. And the truck had a really pretty dash. The guy put red, uh, red, I guess, bulbs in all of his gauges. So it was, it was a nice looking dash. So here we go. Here's a photo of that gauge and the dash. And as you can tell, it's really a pretty looking dash. And this particular engine, we are going to be running about 26 to 28 inches of boost. So that's uh, halfway between 20 and 40, somewhere a little bit less than that is where it should run. The gauge, which we thought was bad when we called the OEM to see what a new dash gauge cost, the gauge was almost $200. So we were glad to find that the gauge was not in fact the problem. Here's the fitting that feeds air to that dash gauge you just saw. And the circled fitting is the centered brass fitting. And that is what the actual problem was with the boost gauge. There was nothing wrong with the lines or the gauge themselves. One of the things that well, we really try to do is be accurate in our repairs and not just buy a bunch of parts and throw them at it. Uh, I think about just myself when I go in to get something repaired someplace. I really hope that the person repairing it is conscientious and does a good job and just changes what needs to be changed. So we strive to do that. Here is that fitting. Uh, you can't really see that it's plugged in this photo, but this is what it looks like. This is the restricted orifice side. And as you can see, there is a very tiny hole in the center of it. Now we'll flip over to the other side oh. and you'll see that centered brass filter that's pressed into the fitting. Thanks for joining me on Neural Splendor.